Meg, the Director of Geospatial at Stamen Design. I'm Quincy Morgan, Technical Lead at OpenStreetMap US. We're here to talk to you about a transition that happened this year, um, whereas Stamen Design uh, had been the home and, and the place where field papers originated back in 2010-2011 era. Um, this year, this spring, we transi transitioned it over to the OpenStreetMap US. Um, into the hands of the OpenStreetMap US, it became a, a charter project. Oh, is that fair to say? It's in-house project. In-house project. Thank you for that distinction. <laughs> it's an in-house project now of the of of OSM US, um, and we're here to talk to you about that today and just to just start the groundswell behind um, bringing field paper, like building a community around what field papers becomes next. So thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. What is field papers for anyone who hasn't encountered it? Um, I, you know, I think it, it's, um, in a word, it's, 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 it's the lowest tech solution there is for bringing data into OpenStreetMap. It's also um, a wonderful entry point or gateway for folks that are either new to the technology of OpenStreetMap or new to the concepts of mapping itself. Um, it allows you to print out um, and and then create, annotate, or digit, digit, and digitize um, and georeference uh, OSM features that you see. As, the, as this nice um, illustration shows you, you find the place you want a map, you print it out, you go out in the field, you draw on that map, take a picture of it, voila, your annotations are there, digitized, um, right in the right geographic space, and you can transform them into OpenStreetMap features. Um, it was developed for and embraced by NGOs and nonprofits. Um, from uh, all the way through, that's always been the target and the focus, and that's really who adopted it in the communities that have adopted it over the years. Um, and it was it, it was actively supported to, by Stamen up until these years. Well, it's it's been supported by Stamen up until this year. It was actively under development from about 2012 to 2016. So the history of uh, field papers is is that. Um, it's, uh, it originally started as walking papers. That was the very first version that Mike McGursky built around the time of the Haiti earthquake in, in, and the, one of the first humanitarian open street map mobilizations in 2010. So it was brought into the field at that time and used to, um, you know, used in environments where no one had any access to technology and they're just, you know, there was this groundswell of, you know, volunteering and, and a real desire to map things. And, um, the paper maps really did the trick and, and, and came in in a pinch, and it was, it was a huge part of that effort. But also after that experience in the field, folks realized that um, a single, this, this, this little walk, it was too much of a rinky dink pool. You didn't just need one page in order to mobilize and transmap a large area. You needed to be able to build atlases, um, to print out atlases and, and distribute them if you're, if you're going to go to the effort of sending out a, a team into the field to, to grab all of this data, you needed the ability to recollate it into an atlas. So that's really how field papers first came to be, how it moved from walking papers to field papers. Um, and you can see in the upper left here that 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 map right there was from that original 2010 mobilization in the, in the, um, in the after the earthquake in Haiti. Um, it became, for a number of years, it became an essential tool for the missing, in part of the missing maps toolkit used by HOT, used by Médecins Sans Fontiers. Oh, my French is great today. Um, um, and the American and, and British Red Cross. Um, this is great. Um, they quote down here. Um, this is, a, this is a, an effort to, to map an area that was um, trying to fight back the cholera epidemic. First cartography of, of Rumobashi since the Belgians left. Uh, uh, that that effort there, um, and um, and it's also been a critical part of teaching through teach, teach, teach OSM, and then any anyone who's um, tried to bring OSM into the classroom can can attest to what the power of the being able to introduce students to OSM by printing out a page of the OpenStreetMap map and, and sending people up into the field to collect data. Um, So over the years, um, the, there's been, it's been kind of, the, the, the support of it has been episodic. There's been all sorts of people that have, all sorts of organizations that stepped forward to fund field papers and support it. Um, Cesarius Associates, USAID, the Hewlett Foundation, American Red Cross and others. But it's really been kind of dormant um, since 2016, uh, which is why um, 
it, at the beginning of this year, uh, I reached out to Maggie Cowley and, you know, we, we brought a little group together. Um, and then Quincy really um, did a bit of a heroic lift here to get everything off of the stamen servers and over into an in-house project of OpenStreetMap US so that it can be more accessible to all of you. Cool. Uh, yeah, and I'll just say it was awesome to yeah, bring the project on board. It's, we thought it was a great fit, especially with Teach OSM being a, pro a program of OpenStreetMap US, and it fits with you know our mission to you know, support projects uh, at support OpenStreetMap and related projects uh, for mappers in the US and around the world. Um, so right here we have centroids of every atlas page in the field papers database. Uh, they're making a lot of maps out there, and <laughs> um, there are uh, there are hundreds of thousands of analyses that have been created using field papers, and you know tens of thousands of uploads that people have done. And that data, um, you can create private analyses, but you can also create public ones. So you know if somebody else comes along, they can also uh, find that free data. And um, just to walk you through the tool itself, um, this is the homepage. Um, I just want to say I love the design the statement team did. I think it holds up even you know ten years ago. It was made when I was in high school, and it's still it's still really uh, um, easy to use and fun. And this is how you create a an atlas. You just say how many pages you want, what background you want, give it a name, keep it private if you like, uh, with an account, and click the button. And if you're lucky, you uh, get the atlas rendering. Um, only takes a minute or two depending on the size of the atlas. And then you have a page where you can download it at any time. It basically lives forever. Anyone else can go on and download your atlas if they want, unless it's private. And then this is what a page looks like. You can print it out on any printer and bring it out into the field. Um, distribute it to a group or just go about yourself. Um, and it's just great, even if you don't want to use it for surveying at all, if you just want an OpenStreetMap paper atlas for your travels or what have you, um, you can do it with field papers. Um, here's a listing of various atlases people have made. As you can see, this is I took a screenshot last night. Uh, people around the world are are still using it. Uh, so what it looks like in the field. Um, as you can see, you can have very detailed notes if you like. Um, and it's so nice to like have a pen and paper. Like I just I just want to make this mark, and you can you can do it so much easier than on yeah, a lot of surveying tools. And then there's, if you want, you can upload it. Um, you can either scan it, take a picture with your phone. And um, then here's the listing of the scanned uh, papers. This is all at fieldpapers.org, by the way. And when things work well, you can even open it up in ID. We have a tile server, and or also in Jossum. There's a Jossum plugin. And you can trace and reference right on top of all your edits, um, which is super cool. <laughs> A lot of people are in the community a lot, long time and don't even know about this tool. Um, and here we have uh, our GitHub page, Salt Open Source, of course. Uh, and I've been working to you know, update the documentation, uh, bring a lot of things out of the past and into the present. Um, and you can visit you know, at Field Papers on GitHub to, uh, to learn more. What about the architecture? I'm, I'm really promoting this project as something that you all can get involved with. Um, it's a lot of fertile ground for uh, maybe your first open source contribution, or if you know any of these languages, um, it's a really cool project to work on. And now that it's being active, actively maintained, uh, now's the time to get involved. Um, so if you're in Ruby on Rails, Python, Node.js, there's even a little PHP in there that I'm trying to, trying to get rid of because it's only one file, but, uh, or if you're a Java developer, the plugin needs work as well. Uh, so what's OpenStreetMap US doing now that we've taken this project on? Uh, we're not doing everything per se, but we're going to maintain the existing functionality. We're paying for hosting. Um, we're updating a lot of the dependencies that have been deprecated, you know, security updates, that kind of thing. Adding modern must-haves. Um, they, they didn't even have HTTPS on these pages for a while. Um, so now we have that, which is great because we do passwords going through. <laughs> uh, continuous deployment. So whenever there's a pull request that's been merged, it goes right up to the cloud now and it's uh, live. Uh, we have privacy policy. We have um, we will have privacy policy. Uh, we have code of conduct. Uh, all these things that make for like a vibrant project. Um, 
And the, the goal is to be able to maintain it so that volunteers can contribute at their own pace um, anytime they want. So I'll be doing pull request reviews, uh, updating documentation, adding linting so the code is you know sensical. I, I just, <laughs> it was a few weeks where I was on this and just to get it working on Ubuntu 22, the latest, because it wasn't even deploying. I couldn't even change the text on the, uh, the homepage because the server stack was so old on Heroku where we have it hosted. Um, yeah, but now it's on the latest Node.js. It's on Python 3. Uh, if you know the latest tools or if you want to, um, please jump in. The water is fine because there's a lot of times when things work not so well. And I'm definitely not digging the original crew. Like all the frameworks have changed a lot and we're still using some old things. I get emails like this several times a week from the field papers address. And Stephanie has said she has many, many, many more from all around the world. People are like, oh, well, this just didn't work. And I'm like, I, I can't help you. I don't have you know, the, the time for that right now. Um, but maybe one of you can. You get some Greek ones, some Greek too. I think it's a Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Oh, yeah. Dang. That's what Google told me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and mm -hmm. things don't go so well. Uh, I should have had a trigger alert warning. Um, this was a file that is still in the field papers code from nine years ago. It's not shown in the app, thank goodness, but uh, is always haunting my dreams <laughs> since I've seen it. <laughs> um, so I'll take it off the screen. <laughs> you can go find it in the repository. Scammon loves the Easter egg. Yeah, yeah. So we want that to uh, never appear again. So you can come to uh, field papers slash field papers on GitHub. There's a ton of issues. There's some really amazing ideas in here. People who want to use it not just for surveying, but um, you know, to be able to customize their own atlases, have high resolution uh, turnouts, um, to be able to use OpenStreetMap accounts instead of our, you know, our custom field papers accounts to to make editing easier and um, you know, contributing easier. Uh, stuff like that. If if you have a dream, uh, you can post it on GitHub. But if you have coding, then you can pose an issue, which is all more valuable. <laughs> um, but yeah, feel free to drop by, and uh, you know, you can come talk to me or Stephanie. And there's a field, yeah, and there's a birds of a feather session tomorrow. I'm told. Yeah. Yeah. And keep an eye out for the birds of a feather session that we should show up to tomorrow if you want to keep stay involved with field papers, and the venerated tradition, and uh, going to keep going. Yeah, so go out there and uh, make an Alice. Thanks so much. <laughs>